Hey everyone, today I want to show you how I made these awesome articulating lampshades. And it's all from a design from our own shower curtains. Check it out! Please and thank you. Hello everyone. I've gone ahead and downloaded the picture from my phone. Here's what we have. And the program that I like to use, and I'm sure this will be a contentious opinion, but I, I prefer paint.net, um, but only because I'm familiar with it. Um, and everything that I'm going to do in here, you can also do in Photoshop or other programs. GIMP. So uh, the first thing I do when I come in here is to make sure that my my uh, pattern is flat and level. Um, to do that, you can use Control Shift Z in Paint.net to bring up this rotate and zoom interface, and this will actually let you adjust tilt, pan, and roll until it's just right. But I think, I think I did a pretty good job with my initial photo. To uh, check, just draw, so we'll pop open a new layer above this. Draw a rectangle kind of around the pattern to let us see. And then from here, we can draw um, a line from this point, hold shift so it's straight over to this point, and we see that actually we need to rotate this slightly to the right. I think if we do the same from up here, yeah, that'll confirm it. So what we can do is come back to this la background layer, control all, and just use the pointer and rotate. And if you need more granular control, just move the mouse out further. And I just want to get it Close. Okay. I'm pretty happy with that. All right. Next thing we want to do is get rid of all the cruff. So anything we don't want, we'll just select what I do want. Go to um, Edit, Invert Selection to select everything else, and delete it, but we'll do it from the right layer. Let's just get rid of that layer for now. Um, another thing you can do, actually if it's just a box, is Image Crop to Selection, and that's nice because it'll scale everything in. Um, and then, since we have pretty good contrast on this pattern, um, what I'm going to do is just use the Magic Fill tool and select our pattern, make sure that it's gotten everything that we want. There's some kind of flickering pixels here, so I'm going to just dial up the tolerance, and then maybe I'll Alt. Just kind of control click to add things that you want and alt click 
to remove things that you don't want, and it should be learning. Okay, and here I will use the invert selection delete. There we go. Now we have just the pattern isolated. Um, at this point, I want to turn it completely black and white. And I want to just crank the contrast up to its maximum. So it's just completely black on transparency. At this point, we have what we want from our pattern. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to save this. Now our pattern is over here. I'm actually going to save it as a JPEG or a PNG. There we go, because now I can come over to this web tool, png to svg.com, and we'll actually convert this to a path. There's other desktop applications that will do this, but I find that this gets me a good start. So colors, we'll just say one, two, black and white, and we will generate. quite sure if that worked, but let's open it in, I use Inkscape, nope, no path, nothing, alright, so what if we simplify it a little? There we go, one color. So there's our SVG. Um, we can probably reduce the simplification passes. Though actually it doesn't look too different, so I'll I'll keep I'll keep it. So here is our image to vector SVG. Open this up in Inkscape. And then here we might need to do a little more work. So, not a lot. It looks like. So, I'm going to use this uh, node tool so I can kind of view the path and see really if there's any gaps. Um, we have to fill those, or if there's if there's places that are just overly complicated. So in here, you see how it it's really rough, and there's just a ton of nodes here. Um, so there's a couple ways to handle this. We could just select everything and tell it to simplify, but find when we do that, it gets a little um, messy with a pattern like this. So what I usually do is I just come in and if, if there's not too many, delete a handful of these points in between. That really smooths it out. You really only need couple points towards the top and bottom to get your curve. You can adjust the, uh, the actual profile of the curve here if it looks a little strange. And there. So, 
stuff down here. So we'll just delete some of these. Really, it's where where it has these notes really close together. You can do that as much or as little as you want. Um, once you're happy with that, you save your SVG, and then we're going to come into Fusion 360. So this is what's going to allow us to convert this SVG into an actual three-dimensional object. All right, so here we are in a new Fusion 360. Um, what I'm going to do is come up to insert and insert SVG, insert from computer, and then this will let you choose a file. So we'll go to the desktop, grab that SVG file, choose a plane, we'll choose this plane so it's facing the front, and voila. So now we can finish our sketch. Look at that. Mm, so we do have an issue down here where this curve is not manifold. But you know what? I'm not concerned because this pattern is symmetrical. And really all we want is this leaf and this leaf um, because the other two are pretty much identical. Take the line tool. Come across there, and the line tool will come across to there. Actually, while we're in here, this looks very thin. So let's grab the spline tool. And just add a little curve in there to. help that not be so fragile. So now we're going to grab the pieces we want for our first body, press E to extrude, we'll go 5 millimeters, there we go, and then I'll grab the pieces we want for our second leaf, press E to extrude, 5 millimeters, now we have our two bodies. I like to name them once we have them. So, leaf one, leaf two. We can hide our sketch, and now we can work with work with these. So, we can press M to move, rotate this to be the same orientation. Bring it up next to the other leaf. And from here, we can work on them just like any other part in Fusion 360. So um, we can sketch on the object. We can uh, pull a rectangle across. Extrude that in to actually make a base here, you can hit circle to sketch on this piece, extrude through the center to hollow it out. And then if you want a nice rounded base, we can cut off the corners like that. And that 
that's more or less how I got the part. I've gone in and made a number of adjustments. Um, and here, I'll show you the final final design. So here's what I ended up with. Um, version 17. Um, so I actually came back through, made um, an offset extrusion um, for the pieces in between um, to give it this nice kind of webbing. Um, also make it stronger. But since it's a light shade, um, I found that if, if we left these hollow, um, the bright light would shine through. So it helps cover it up a little more. Um, the base, pretty much what I did earlier, just extruded off of it, um, carved out a, a hole. Um, and then uh, for, the, for the actual light fixture, I measured around the base of the uh, light bulb, um, found out where the screws, how high the screws were up, how deep they needed to go, and from that got a good profile. I made a test print to ensure a good fit, um, and then made some modifications, made it a little taller, um, and it was kind of loose in there, so I, I brought it out a little bit. Um, yeah, uh, all of these parts are designed with 3D printing in mind, so uh, that's something important to think about. Um, so I made sure that this part, the lampshade base, uh, could print from this plane and not have any overhangs, need any supports, so this will print upside down from what we're looking at. It'll have good bed adhesion. Um, these holes aren't so large that I expect any kind of warping or, or drooping, though um, I might thicken up this wall if I get that. Uh, and then the same with the leaves. Uh, the leaves uh, have a flat plane on this side, and then the, uh, the actual hinge part that'll carry the pin comes out off of one side so it's offset so we can print flat on this face also just extruded some pins um, one thing that I use very often uh, when deciding parts to be 3d printed is uh, the offset face tool um, so you select the face that you want to actually move, and then you'll do offset face. And then you can um, subtract a, an amount for your tolerance on there. So uh, if you print your part with, um, with uh, these, these two pieces uh, without any tolerances, they will not fit. The, the 3D printer right, is, is not a, a perfect machine, and you'll have layer lines here, and this will actually have some, some jagged edges, uh, depending on the resolution of your 3D printer and the layer height. So uh, what I typically do is I, I find all my interfaces, and then I'll use offset face to subtract uh, 0.2 millimeters uh, from one of those faces. Um, so I've offset the face on the pin, 0.2. So there's a little bit of tolerance there. And it should fit pretty snug. It should slide in, but still be pretty snug uh, and have enough friction to hold the position of the, of the leaf. Once you're happy with your parts, um, to export them to the slicer in Fusion 360, go to Tools, Make uncheck send a 3D print utility and then um, select the part that you would like to export. Select OK. This will be our leaf hinge to large.stl to the slicer. 
So here we are in Pusha Slicer. To get started, we'll add an STL. Choose our leaf. And then um, there's this handy place on face option. So we'll place it on that flat face. And then um, we'll just rotate it 45 so it's nice and flat. And then we can also add our face. And again, just place on face like that. And then um, if you have multiple prints, this button up here will arrange them on the build plate so they can both print. And voila. Currently running this point three millimeter draft setting uh, from Maker's Muse. Thank you. Uh, so we get both of these in four hours. So you slice it, export it, save your G-code. We're going to put that on an SD card and take it out to the printer. So just to recap, we took a picture, dot that into paint.net, isolated the pattern, cleaned it up, black and white, high contrast. We then save that as a PNG, PNG to SVG.com. From here, we got a vector graphic. Took our vector graphic into Inkscape, cleaned up the nodes, saved it again, went into Fusion 360, where we imported that SVG, extruded it to get bodies, modified those bodies into whatever part we wanted, exported that result as an STL file into Prusa Slicer. Prusa Slicer slices that into G code, and we can take that G code to our printer and get our part. So, How'd we do? I have the first prints off the bed. The scale is not one to one, but I'd say the pattern is spot on. Out of that phase. Look at that. So here's kind of the evolution of the design. My first prints had the pin built into the to the part, and that, and then these snapped into the base. But the PETG just wasn't compliant enough, so it would snap um, when I tried to snap these in. Um, so then I moved to the second iteration. Never mind that. This uh, had. A little glob of PETG that burned on the nozzle. Um, so I added this fill so that it would be more of a shade and then moved to using a separate pin and that seemed to work a lot better but the pieces were still on the small side. Um, and here was the base I used for them. Um, and the base was just uh, little too small and a little too short so I elongated it um, widen the base and these just had too much wiggle room in between so and then for this one I'm, I'm printing in clear PETG which polished and, and thin, you can get relatively clear parts. Um, but with this, it gives this nice uh, cloudy whitish aspect to it. To the final part. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da.
the final part, the leaves are much larger. The base is much wider, so it fills more of that space for the pin. Um, the actual mount comes out further. Um, yeah, and they overlap nicely, giving us this cool effect. And they articulate well, so you can bring it down and make it more like an open flower, or you can close it up. Yeah. And that's that. All from a shower curtain. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Other bathroom life hacks. The Hall of Lost Socks. And Dirty Masks. Tired of forgetting which switch does which? Print a labeled switch. Witcher.